Um, so just to let you guys know, I, Nikki, I don't know if you've been in the on these live chats before, but I've been doing them like these creativity live chat talk things um, for the last sort of month, I think. And so I was just going to do one last one before Christmas to say, you know, have a great Christmas and all that to whoever joins the conversation. Also, if anyone had any questions, because I've sort of set the topic every week. And so I said last week that I would just do an, more of an open one. So if people have questions or comments that they want to make. Um, we the first week we talked about rejection and how creative people can sort of navigate rejection. I think anybody it's really it's not specifically about creative people. Anybody who has to deal with a lot of other people's like thoughts and input and stuff like that in their work is is applicable to them. And then we talked about work ethic. Hey, Steet18, welcome back. Um, yeah, then we talked about work ethic the following week. And this was like about all the things to do with the hustle of everything that I'm guessing that that request to join this live video is a mistake as well. <laughs> I don't know why people would want to do that. Um, but like, if you want, oh, what have I done? Oh, I've turned the camera around. Oh, you can see my deodorant that's hiding behind the camera. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Anyways, so then the next week, um, God, luckily there was nothing embarrassing back there. And then the next week we talked about the hustle, like work ethic and stuff like that. And um, just all the things that you have to do. Hey, is it a joke? Hey, Alistair 10 and John Reynolds, Esquire. Um, I have big expectations of people that add Esquire on the end of their names. <laughs> I thought that the other day when I saw, when I saw that. So what happened when I pressed that button? Oh, I see. So it gives me the option to go live with people. It's a whole new world, isn't it? It's not Periscope. Um, hi, Alistair. Um, yeah, so all the things that you have to do to just, like, achieve what you want to achieve out of this life, that's what we talked about in the second week. Third week, we talked about criticism and how to navigate, again, other people's opinions, but also your own, like, that sort of mental noise that happens that stops you doing stuff. And again, like that isn't the, just the preserve of creative people, is it? I mean, we all at some point have got this like yak to yak going on in our heads, um, telling us what we're not very good at or where we're going wrong in our lives, you know what I mean? So that's what we talked about the following, uh, the fourth, third week. Week four. Ah, uh, it's, 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 um, I mean, the thing is, Nikki, it's there to, I mean, this is what I was talking about, uh, I think in, yeah, when I talked about criticism in week three, it is there to help us in the sense that it's trying to keep us safe, that, that noise is like trying to keep us safe. But the way it does it is by trying to keep everything the same. And a good strategy is telling, is for, if, a good strategy for that voice is to tell you not to take risks by telling you you're not very good at stuff. Well, don't do that. It didn't work out last time. Don't say that to them. Never works out. They always react funny. Do you know what I mean? They stop us. It's almost like it's, it's, it's main objective is to stop us growing and changing it anyway, just to keep everything exactly the same. So it always gets thrown out of whack whenever we try and do something different. Yeah, you learned how to try to keep it at bay when you, you were in CBT. I've always wondered about CBT, like, I, I, I like the idea that, you know, of taking something on, but I'm never sure about, because for me, it seems like it's dealing with the symptoms rather than the cause. So if the cause is never really addressed, can you really ever transform the thing that's happening? Because you're, you're always dealing with it at the top level, but maybe you can say more, maybe you found it useful. I don't know. I've never tried it though. So I, I'm, it's more of a question than a statement. I don't know. I don't know enough. Stint 18 says, always take risks. Hey, Steve. Yeah, I think you're right. Always take risks. I mean, calculated ones, right? <laughs> because, you know, we don't want to, we don't want to um, die. But um, yeah, I think you're right. And, and risks doesn't have to be, you, you know, risk is a very personal um, sort of, um, me there's a very personal measure of risk, isn't it? Because like some people think that, I always use stand up as an example, because it's like, 
it's, there's so many so many things about life that happen in relation to stand up and i guess i know it because i've lived it but like you know to some people going on stage and, and being a stand up comedian would be considered like the biggest risk ever and then to other people it's just natural so your own sense of risk is personal to you and what you choose to do to express risk is yours but you're right you do grow as a as a result of it hang on let me i just missed some comments i'm i'm, I'm this is a more of a free flowing one today so i'm going to be like speaking more to your comments than i haven't got anything planned i wrote this this is all i've got <laughs> I just had some, anyway, let me see what you wrote. You did CBT because of anxiety attacks were getting in the way. Yeah, well, I mean, look, Nikki, you've got to do what you've got to do. You know, like anxiety is a real thing that can be really debilitating. I haven't, I'm, thank God, I, I haven't suffered from it um, really. I've had a couple of moments where I've had like what I would consider like sort of borderline panic attacks, but I've never really, never really experienced it. So you've got to do what you've got to do to, to put that right, because you don't want something like that getting in the way of actually living your life. Riskier the road, greater the profit. Alistair, is that a real saying? Is that an actual saying? I kind of like it in a way, but it seems like it could be just a way of getting people to buy shares in, in Bitcoin or something. But um, yeah, if that's a real saying, then that's pretty cool. Um, did touch on the reasons why, but still waiting for that help. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a long game, isn't it? You know, I feel like the thing with like dealing with that story, uh, not, wait, let me put this a better way. Dealing with the cause of the things that we're dealing with in the present is can be a long game. But sometimes it's one of those things where you find the right trigger, the right process, and it can obliterate it in a moment. But it's a case of how, how do you find that right process? Because it might be therapy, but it might not. It might be CBT. It might be something else or something else. So, yeah, that's almost the journey in life is trying to find what that process is. Um, I did this thing called Constellations once, which I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but it's a really fascinating thing where this sort of facilitator asks you what, what you want and then they ask what's in the way of you getting it. And then it uses all the other people that are in the in the group so there's one i did i think there was about sort of 10 people or something and they use them to represent certain parts of your life and somehow they end up sort of inhabiting or being inhabited by the energy of the thing that they represent so say for example you said oh i think the cause of my anxiety is my relationship with my, my dad or something like that then someone would represent your dad you would probably be you somebody else would represent your mum, and and then they would move and the facilitator would move them uh, as they felt called to be moved until they found out where the energy blockage was of the thing. Now, I'm not saying that's for you, but it is interesting that I, I went, this one session I went to, this woman had a son who was, she was, she was like from Eastern Europe, I think like Poland, and she'd had a son with a British guy and it hadn't worked out with her partner. And now she was trying to decide whether she should go home to Poland or whether she should stay. And she'd been in therapy for like seven years. And this one constellation, um, managed to bring clarity to her whole situation. She was like, it's evident, I have to go home. But she'd been in this like constant battles and forwards. I don't know what to do about my son. I don't know, because he's British born, but you know. And just in that one one little session, one session, she figured out all her problems. And uh, you know, it's something that a therapist had been like talking, or not just about that one thing, but you know, she'd been in therapy for all that time, seven years. I mean, you could argue that maybe the therapy broke the back of the problem and that the constellation was the tipping point. You don't want to make it like, oh, the therapist was useless. <laughs> but I did think it was kind of funny as I sat there, like the therapist is like, seven years you've had at this, one session of this, and she's sorted. So yeah, you just it's just a case of finding the right thing, isn't it? Uh, Mandy Sheriff, hello. Mandy L. Sheriff, hello. Um, Rose of acquisition from Star Trek. <laughs> is that where that quote came from? like they say, very long. Uh, okay. We have to be ourselves, otherwise we, lo we lose. Well, you make it sound like it's really easy being ourselves, but it isn't because a lot of our time is spent in self-concern and concern over what other people think of us and concern over what people who aren't even thinking about us, what they think about us, like our parents or something. And thinking, like living in the shadow of a thought that you think your father is having about you that you should be doing better or you should be doing something different or you shouldn't be do you know what i mean like so you say like be yourself but the human condition is to have a lot of concern about like what other people think it's very rare for it to meet a person who really doesn't care 
like what other people think. Very rare, very, very, very rare. Um, some crap therapists. You've had some crap therapists, Nikki. Yeah, it's, a, it's it's like a it's like a marriage. I remember the first time I was I was experiencing like real depression, and I um, as opposed to fake depression, um, and I uh, wanted to find a therapist. And the first person I spoke to was horrible. Like it was just on the phone, but I was like, oh god, <laughs> no wonder like you know the therapy has such a bad reputation because this person they just felt like really like they didn't care and like i was so distraught when i actually made this phone call and this was just to be introduced to somebody with the potential to go and see them and and, and like this person just didn't seem to care so i was like oh this is awful but then luckily i was introduced to somebody through a friend um but yeah it's, it's a really it's like it's like finding a marriage like finding the right person to marry, like finding the right therapist, because, you know, you got to feel gotten by them so that you can speak your life into the space that they create. If you don't feel like it's a safe space that they're creating, you're just like, oh, no, I'm fine, thanks. <laughs> it's, it's just like, you can't, it can't be done. Is that about an energy block of visualizing a situation relationship in a different way? Um, well, uh, to be honest with you, uh, confabulations galore, uh, I said it. I'm not sure. I don't, I don't really know how it works. It could be, it could be a bit of both, but I think that there was definitely something energetic that shifted for this person. Um, but then uh, when I did my constellation and it was about relationships or lack of thereof, um, I feel like it was a bit of both. Definitely. I feel like I got clarity over something because I was a because I was able to see it in a different way because of how it was presented to me in this constellation. But look, the thing is, it doesn't really matter because either way, if it works or it brings you some new understanding, some new insight about your life or yourself that you never had before, then it's like winner winner chicken dinner, isn't it? You your life you're different. It's you're you're different after that moment. It's like that old saying about, you know, if you dip your hand into a river, when you take your hand out, it's a different river. And it's the same, like, if you go through a process like that, like, when you go in to it, you're one person. When you come out, you're somebody else. No one is ever truly themselves. Um, I mean, that's an interesting thing, isn't it? I mean, how deep do we want to go here? Because, like, Citizen Joke says no one is ever true themselves i don't know that that's necessarily true but see the, my first response was who are we really because really we're not really one thing because even on a basic level if you think about who you are with your parents who you are with your work colleagues who you are with your friends who you are with your siblings it's all different and which one could you really say is you because normally i think people think of the the, the, when people refer to me as in themselves, I think they think them on their best day. I think they're thinking of the Baraka version of themselves. That's really them. And everything else is like a charlatan. But actually, they're all us. So when are, when are we ever... What is, what is us to say that, that that's really us? Do you know what I mean? We've gone too deep. Nikki says, she has, you have motor and oral tics on the tube today. I was ticking and the looks I was getting were horrible. People got up and moved. Oh, people, Nikki. People. You need a little joke in your back pocket um, to just disarm people, don't you? Like, just tell them it's not catching or something like that. And just remember, you know, I'm, it's easier said than done, Nikki, I know, because I don't have the condition that you have. But like, just remember that, that their action is about them and about their fears and insecurities. It's nothing to do with you. And maybe your journey is to have the strength to be able to not let those people bother you. I'm not saying you're not strong, but because but it's a particular type of strength that you need to get specifically around other people's view of you because you're awesome and you don't need endorsement from people on the tube are freaking out because they don't understand what's going on with you you just don't that, that their, their their view in their opinion in that moment isn't isn't valid so all you need is just to remind yourself of that whenever you know you whenever you find yourself in that in that situation there do you know what i mean you don't care what other people think steamed 18 
Okay. Well, that's, that's good. That's a good thing. I mean, I, I always feel like don't care sounds a little bit aggressive. Like, not that I'm saying you're being aggressive, but I always feel like it sounds like the lady just protested too much. Do you know what I mean? Like, don't, I don't care. Like, not affected by, I suppose. That's really what I'm getting at, is that, like, other people's opinion doesn't alter who you're being. That's that's more what I meant. Your therapist forgot to turn up twice to an appointment. Great therapist holy shit um hello danielle logan 86 anything that helps even if it's really small makes a difference did do that sometimes haha <laughs> cheer up a cheer i cheer for nikki i thought it said cheer up I, I think i might have slight dyslexia cheer i cheer for nikki very good there you go especially when i hit myself in the face <laughs> that would freak me out nick i'm not gonna lie I'm not gonna lie <laughs> but you know that's humans, isn't it? We are scared of things we don't understand. And I, I should imagine that a lot of times the people are reacting not because of out of, out of a sort of meanness, but they just don't understand and they have the, they just have a reaction. Don't they? Um, anyone got any creative uh, questions or comments they want to share, like anything off of the last um, videos or anything like that, that, um, that thoughts that they've had? Or anything. Um, I wanted to share something that occurred to me yesterday. I got offered, well, not got offered something. I had the chance to sort of audition for something, and I immediately had this sense of like it's not going to work out. And I thought, let me get to the bottom of this because I've had this feeling a lot. I get this feeling regularly. And I thought, let me just have a think and track back where that could possibly have come from. Because sometimes, a lot of the time, I have this sense of there's an inner circle and there's an outer circle. And like, when you get a job, I feel like you're in the inner circle and it feels all... Like, say for example, when you're watching X Factor, I always get that sense for the people who have been accepted into boot camp or get onto judges' houses, that they're, they're in the inner circle and it feels lovely and, and warm and I made it to the next level. Whereas, you know, the ones that get left behind at whatever stage, they're on the outer circle. And I always feel like that feels cold and sort of blue and, you know, just like hostile or whatever. And I was thinking, why? And I experienced that with my own stuff. Like when I get a job, I feel like, ooh, inner circle, yeah. And then when I don't get a job, I'm like, I feel like I'm like Tiny Tim, at the window of, not Tiny Tim, what's his name? Willy Wonka. Not Willy Wonka. What's the boy called? Charlie. You know what I mean? Like at, at the window of a shop, <laughs> looking in, like as all the other kids eat chocolate and, and, all, and all the rest of it, while I can't afford to get, you know, get any chocolate. Um, I'm going to come back to you, Citizen Joke. I'm just, let me finish um, this little thought and then I'll come back to you because I want to, that looks like an interesting comment. So, um, yeah, so I thought, let me track back and find out where this has come from. And it, and, and some of the sort of therapy and personal development work I've had suggests that there's often like a catalyst for those sort of beliefs in our lives that trigger this idea that you carry on regardless of whether it's true or not, all it takes is one little incident to sort of set in motion this set of this, this belief that becomes something that you, you don't even consider to be a belief, it's just the way the world is. And for me, I was thinking about it last night and I tracked it back to one little incident that happened when I was little that I think, I think is the cause of me, me thinking like this. And basically what happened was, uh, we had this relative, young relative that used to come and stay with us. And my brother used to, you know, give her a lot of attention and, and look after her and stuff. And there was one time where he was making like ice lollies or something like that for her. And he turned around and he said, these aren't for you. And I remember, it's one of those memories, you know, like there's always a little thing that happens when you're a little kid or something that just sticks with you. And that's that memory has stuck with me. And I've never really known why it sort of hung around. Like so many things that have happened in your life that come and go, but little, there's little flashpoints that always, that always stick. And that was one of them. And then I just thought last night, that's what it is. It's like, that created this idea in my mind that there's an inner circle, there's an outer circle. The inner circle gets lovely ice lollies and gets, you know, all this attention. And the outer circle gets told, these aren't for you. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I realised, I had to, I, I sort of realised from there, 
oh, there is no such thing as an inner circle and an outer circle. There's just getting a job and not getting a job. You don't, I don't have to turn it into this whole thing with all this extra meaning of like, do you know what I mean? That, that might mean something about my value or where I stand, that I am the Charlie looking into the sweet shop where, where, the lo where there's loads of chocolate inside. So it was quite an interesting little thought process. And so I, I shared that with the, with the thinking that I wonder if, you know, other creatives or other people have similar things where they've got this belief, this sort of they're starting to smell a rat about do you know what i mean it might not be true or it might yeah it might not be true basically and that was mine that was like and we've got loads of these going on do you know what i mean like in our psyches we've got loads and loads of these little beliefs that we just like take as a given like even things like um nothing ever works out for me or men can't be trusted or parents screw you up you know whatever it is we've got we all one little thing tiny little incident can like, trigger off this belief. And the next thing you know, you're living your life orientated as though it's the truth. Even though you've got no, you're ignoring all the evidence contrary to it. You just look for evidence that verifies it. So it can be a way of liberating ourselves from like hangups by just tracking it back and seeing that it just came from that, just that one little moment. And that it doesn't have to be, from now on it doesn't have to be. So citizen uh, joke, what did you say? Overall, we live in a society that values no I just, I just Neverland really get what that is. You didn't mean Neverland, I don't know what you meant though. So I don't really do normal and it works out. Okay, gotcha, okay. I think that's a good way to be, you know, like if you can and authentically do it rather than being as a reaction, just do, just do you as it were and then just let everyone else orientate themselves around you. Because actually, you're right, we do value uh, value normal but we also secretly are tantalized by people that aren't or aren't normal do you know what i mean because they're living their truth in a way that i think deep down everyone really wants to but feel scared to live outside of the norm sometimes because of judgment because of other people's judgment fear of what other people might say steen 18 says i'm with the ones in the outer circle totally ah but steen Deep 18 you know that there is maybe not that maybe there isn't an inner and an outer circle maybe there is just life and because because you know see the thing is is i'm reading this tony robbins book at the moment and you know he's talking he talks a lot about like how can uh, how can you have thoughts that are empowering to you instead of di di you know disempowering and i think how does it help me to have this notion of this inner circle and outer circle it doesn't at all and it isn't necessarily true and also i've been both I've been given great opportunities and I've lost out on great opportunities. So why not just think of life as just this moving thing that just like sometimes there are opportunities that work out and sometimes things go somebody else's way. And that happens for everybody. Um, no inner or outer circle, do you know what I mean? Hello, more four, six. Oh, hello again. More four, six, 90. Nikki, did you get, did you go for the job? I'm going to go for the job. I'm going for it. And I'm sort of trying to train myself to think more in the sense of it's just another opportunity that may or may not go my way rather than, ah, oh, this is another chance to get that lolly, get that, get in a circle, get that ice lolly. Um, Marshall, hello. Confabulations galore says, I have a similar feeling about belonging and being accepted. I know where it came from, but struggle to step back from it. Um, one of the ways, one of the ways that's, um, can be useful in terms of trying to step away from it is um giving it room to be rather than feeling like you've got to suppress it or do something with it do you know what i mean like just give it a little bit of space because actually what it is is frozen energy of the of who you were when it happened usually it happens in childhood so like you've got a bit of stuck childhood energy that just wants to be acknowledged and given a bit of room so it's not like about suppressing the noise of it um, but just about giving it space to just parent, just be a parent to it. I think that's the thing is that, that that's what a lot of us need is like to parent ourselves in the sense of like the, giving us the parenting that we feel we might have missed out on in a certain moment so that we don't have to let that voice and that noise um, be in the driving seat now. Because imagine like you wouldn't let a nine year old drive your car. So like, but that's what we do when we have these like reactions because I mean, I would have been probably about 
no, 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 not seven, maybe nine or ten when this happened. So it's weird, isn't it, that I would let a ten-year-old in the you know in the driving seat you can come in the car, sit in back, put the child seat on, but you're not driving. That's that's the relationship I think we, we should have with this frozen, stuck, old energy. You can get in the car, but you ain't driving. Hey, Lucy, hello. Nikki says, I've got more open about my tics and my conditions, which has helped me deal with it. I have my animals and my charity work, so that keeps me focused. And that's brilliant. That's brilliant. You, you, living your life, isn't it? Um, thank you. Good luck, says uh, Common Fabulations Galore. Thank you very much. Uh, oh, um, Altugabusoglu. That sounds African, but you don't look African. Anyway, that could be my judgment, but hello. CD Lifestyle, hello. Um, Oh, thank you, Steent18. Respect a lot. Lots to you. That's very sweet. Um, tear down the circles and anything else that limits us. Absolutely. Um, tear down the circles. I mean, the, thi the, the thing is, circles aren't even there. There's no inner circle. There's no outer circle. There just is. There's just this. There's just this us just ticking along. So nothing to tear down. Do you know what I mean? Um, the novel, Nikki. <laughs> we don't talk about the novel. It's all right. It's all right. I mean, I'll, I'm getting there slowly. I've started working on it again, but I've had quite a, a long spell of not working on it. But I will get there. I will get there. Uh, Judith and Joe, hello. Hello. So the, I'm just like um, wrapping up my um, creativity live chats for the year. So I've just done a bit more of an open house today and just like answering comments and questions and stuff like that. Um, before I take a little break from them and come back in the new year. And I think my first off is going to be motivation because everyone's going to be like, well, not everyone, but a lot of people will be, hey, girl, um, evening, Joe. A lot of people will be setting their old, you know, uh, what are they called, New Year's resolutions and stuff. So I thought motivation and inspiration is probably a good one to start the new year with. So that's, that's my thinking. <laughs> Make a TV show out of my procrastination or, or the actual idea for the book. Bit of both. Bit of both. Um, one thing I'll, I've, I made a note of like some other things that I, what I thought I might bring up in this. I'm, I'm going to do 15 minutes more and then I'll be signing off. Um, but yeah, um, was that talking about rest? Because again, like especially creatives and self-employed people are a nightmare for making time to rest. And I think one of the important things about this time of year, it's a weird line across the, oh, I see what that is, All right. Um, one of the, the most important things, uh, is to make time to rest because one thing is a you just need to re recuperate and replenish yourself so that you can just attack attack the new year new years for some reason bring fresh sort of like enthusiasm and stuff so you want to have like all engines fully fully operational do you know what i mean when you go into the new year you don't want to start the new year depleted so use this time to recuperate and obviously yeah have fun and all the rest of it but booze is quite tiring <laughs> i might be getting old but booze is uh oh see you steam 18 um, merry christmas and all that have a lovely time um yeah calm after the christmas storm you gotta take a minute to just like relax and just like get your get your shit together basically to, to start the new year because you don't want to go into the new year exhausted and also someone pointed out to me the other day you know like I'm, i mean i'm not necessarily uh, across all things to do or anything to do with chinese medicine uh, or chinese chinese sort of yeah chinese me medicine or whatever but they're much more into the seasons and stuff like that and the season and winter is like about um rejuvenating and like everything sort of disappearing under the earth everything is happening under the earth that's where the aliveness is and like for us we've had to, you know that's the same for us it's like everything looks dormant but actually loads of stuff is happening under the surface and that's why we've got to rest is because we've got to give everything inside us the chance to sort of regroup find itself find re find its energy the other thing as well is i think that sometimes um creatives think that things will only happen for them if they're doing, if they're grafting. And if they stop grafting, nothing will move. But you have to, A, give the, the universe, whatever you interpret that as being, you've got to give the universe a chance to do work its magic. 
watch my talk on magic last week if you want to sort of fill in the dots around that but also um you've got a you've got to um you've got to let you know on a practical level you've got to let the people who are there for you your reps and all the rest of it and whatever do do what they're gonna do for you it's not all on you hang on what's what nikki 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 you go and fight them fight the mouse off of your cat huh that's happening the wrong way around. All right, Nikki, my love, take care. Have a lovely Christmas and I'll see you on the other side. Um, yeah, so what I was saying, I don't know if that's disjointedly ram rambling what I just said, but basically that you've got to let, you know, the people on your team, friends, family, whatever it is, do what they're going to do to support you. Because, you know, there's often times like where I've had someone, an old friend, call me up and just go, oh, you know, there's this thing going on, wondered if you wanted to get involved with it, or someone that I worked with years ago just says, oh, um, we thought of you for this. Somebody I met 10 years ago um, um, has written a script and they had me in mind for, for a role in it. And that was somebody I'd met 10 years ago, I've not seen them since. So yeah, you have to leave space uh, in terms of having your having a rest to um, to be able to, let those things work on your behalf it's not all on you so that's why rest is good um the last thing i was going to mention is some books that i think would be that would be good good reading they're not necessarily light reading but they've for me i found them really useful um especially in terms of motivation and getting myself out of the mindset of like the ordinary and the mundane, because I think if you're going to, if you want to have an extraordinary life, you've got to, you've got to sort of take your thinking that way. And there's a lot of agreement in society that we, that you keep things normal. You don't be excessive. You don't think, do things too much or whatever. And you do things the normal way, the way it's always been done. So if you want to have an extraordinary life, you've got to start thinking in an extraordinary and phenomenal kind of way. And there's certain books that will help you to do that. Um, one of the books I will recommend is called, oh, I can comment, um, Big Magic by um, Liz, hang on, Liz Gilbert. There we go. She, uh, she wrote Eat, Pray, Love as well. And it's a really great uh, great read, especially for creatives or people who are dabbling. People are giving themselves a hard time about not getting started or why haven't I gotten successful? Or if, if you're just having a lot of negative thought around your creativity, then Big Magic is a real sort of tonic. It's really easy to read. It's written with uh, with really lovely humor. It's, it's, I mean, it'll take you like a day to read it. It's a nice big text, a nice sort of big weighty book and it's just a really joyful book. She's very good at like taking the seriousness out of like being a creative because sometimes we can all get very worthy and terribly sort of like earnest about the whole thing. Um, another book is, I'm not going to write who it's by because that will take me too long, but another book is called Stealing Fire and that is by a couple of guys called um, Jamie Wheel and Stephen Kotler and that book is about um, the f uh, creating flow and how that how that works and it's, more, it's a bit scientific so it could be a bit dense, if a, a de bit of a dense read if you're not really into like scientific um literature and stuff like that but it's it's really well 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 written and really interesting and basically it's talking i mean ultimately we should all be the world would be a much calmer nicer place if we all focused our energy a little bit more on creating that flow experience in our lives because you wouldn't have time to worry about trump remain leave snowflakes Black Lives Matter. Do you know what I mean? It would um, we, we'd be we'd be busy surfing and skiing and writing and doing cool shit. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Um, another one which I'm gonna recommend is I think it's I think this is the title New Earth, and it's another book by Eckhart Tolle who wrote um, The Power of Now. So this one is. Um, it's basically following on from that and it talks about basically how the mind stroke ego is an entity in and of itself but it isn't us a lot of people don't realize that there is more to them than the thoughts that they're having they think that the thinking that goes on in their head is them thinking those thoughts and they're not and this book explains why that is the case me is an idea it's a construct 
there is no me but you to experientially get that you have to read a book like that or you have to do you have to you have to really sort of take action and be in something exper an experiential like program workshop read a book something like that to be able to really get why that's the case the purpose of it isn't to know that there is no me the purpose of it is the liberation that they can give you you live your life from a different place if you know that there's no real me as such that's why that that, that conversation earlier i can't remember who brought it up maybe it was you can can fab Populations galore that said that. I'm not sure. Um, Maluka Luka. I am Maluka Maluka Luka. All right, very good. Anyway, hello, welcome to the conversation. Ah. Um, uh, what's the last one? I think it was another one. Oh yeah. And if you want, just like some straight up like motivational, just get the fuck on with it. What read? Um, Tony Robbins. I've read. I've got. What's it called? I think it's called Awake the Giant. <laughs> that's okay i, I nearly I, I i was getting it like at first and now i've just lost it again i had it but now i'm losing it um yeah but a tony robbins book called awake the giant within i mean i think his books probably are, are generally are pretty good but this one i just happened to pick um randomly and it's been great it's really interesting it's quite old so it feels like it's probably about 20 years old because some of the references he's talking about because he's talking about donald trump being a businessman and stuff like that so this is obviously like written in the i think like early 90s or something but in terms of just like understanding how you can have dominance over your life in a way that you haven't before it's a great read uh maybe there is a joke there alistair 10 i'll leave you to find it anyways so those are my hot tip recommendations for good reads. If you want to read something other than novels and such like. Hey, uh, Sly One, and I am Nick James. Thanks for joining. I'm actually just about to sign off, but I might put this on, um, on YouTube. I'm not sure because the other ones have been specifically on topic, but this one was a bit like, uh, you know, we, we went to lots of different places and we talked more about sort of psychology and stuff like that a bit more, more than creativity. But hey. That's where the conversation went. Now I'm saying, um, that's it for that's it for this year. Um, but if you um, have enjoyed these other creativity, ch oh, don't leave us. Oh, thanks. Um, where's the cat? Oh, the cat got adopted, Marshawn. The cat is gone, but we missed the cat. I'm thinking of getting another one, but I don't know if I can. I don't think I can go through the heartache of just like getting somebody in my life like that and then they've got to go. Um, no worries, Confab. That's what I'm going to call you for short, Confab. Uh, cool. Thank you, Alice. That's very sweet of you to say. Um, yeah, I know it was tough. It was tough, Marshawn. Let me tell you. Guys, I'm going to sign off. Um, I have... Uh, my next task for today because i finished all my work for the year now i've got to prep for an audition but that i can do quietly um over the next few days but i'm not doing anything for the rest of the day no more work for the rest of the day no more work tomorrow no more work christmas day I might do a little bit of work on boxing day and then back to work on the 27th slowly slowly easing myself back in but Got to give yourself a rest. Thank you, Alistair. That's very sweet of you to say. Um, guys, have a wonderful Christmas. See, Trump, we are allowed to say Christmas. Um, thank you, Marshawn. Um, and guys, look, um, have a great New Year's, and I'll see you on the other side. Um, I'll, I'll post on Instagram when the next one's going to be. I have to sort of look at my diary and work out when would work best. But hopefully I will see you all there. And um, stay safe, have fun, get rest, love your family, be happy, live your best life. Big hearts to everyone around you. Don't let the nonsense get you down and be creative. Love your life. I think that's it. Thanks, Joan. See you guys. Take care. Bye-bye.